The 90s were a very interesting period for Bugatti, from the big return and the bankruptcy to the Volkswagen Group. A lot of things happened. Some of the most interesting things were the concepts and the prototypes that came around this time, both from the Italian and the German part. Romano Artioli was trying to save Bugatti and Volkswagen was trying to find what to do with the iconic French brand. So hello guys and welcome back to another video, and here are the Bugatti concepts of the 90s. The first car I want to start this video can barely consider to Bugatti, and not much is known about it. Like I mentioned on my first video, Artioli was the official importer of Suzuki for Italy, and he really wanted to introduce the mighty Cappuccino in Euro. But there was a problem. Cappuccino didn't comply with the European regulation, so the project Suzuki Espresso was started. The idea was to build a Cappuccino-based car for the growing European market. Somewhere down the road, Paolo Martin, the designer of the Bugatti 110 PM, proposed the idea of for the Bugatti 1300, a mid-engine Targa top sport car. And here is where the two projects tie together. Even though it seems hard to imagine a small budget-friendly Bugatti, this thing might have happened, since Artioli had, has stated on an interview that he wanted to build a wide range of Bugattis. The Suzuki project was cancelled somewhere around 1992, when Suzuki sent over 1000 cappuccinos in UK. It's unknown if the 1300 project continued after the design phase, but you can say that the car made it into production in some sort of way, since in 1993 Artioli bought Lotus, and in 1996 Lotus presented, presented the Lotus Elise, which checks all the 1300 marks. But these are just rumors. But the most known Bugatti concept is definitely the EB112, probably because the car almost made it into production. After introducing the EB110, which brought back the racing spirit of Bugatti, Artioli wanted to bring the luxury and the prestige of the Type 41. The answer was the EB112. He contacted Giorgetto Giugiaro to do the design. Originally, Giugiaro presented some designs that really disappointed Artioli, since they didn't uh, represent a modern Bugatti. He suggested some of the Bugatti's trademarks, like the athletic bot tail, the tank body at front end, and the iconic Bugatti round windows. Giorgetto took notice, and so he designed the EB112, which was a true modern representation of Bugatti. The best thing is that he didn't design a retro looking car, like everyone was doing back then. The best example for this is the Chrysler Atlantic, which was inspired by the Bugatti Atlantic. The EB112 had a completely different engine from the EB110. This time was a naturally aspirated 6 liter V12, and like the quad turbocharged 3.5 liter V12 that the EB110 had, the engine was built in house, which is something very impressive. The engine was developed by Mauro Forieri and not by Nicola Materazzi, which worked with the EB110 engine. The reason for this is that Materazzi didn't like the idea of a four-door Bugatti, and so Artioli had to ask for help somewhere else. Like the 110, the 112 was all-wheel drive. But the most impressive thing is that the EB112 had a carbon fiber chassis, something unique for a four-door sedan. Thanks to all this, the EB112 had 455 horsepower, which helped the car to reach a top speed of over 300 km per hour, and could hit 100 in 4 seconds. 
the EB112 was presented at the 1993 Geneva Motor Show, when it left everyone speechless. The car was a hit, and was considered by many as the most beautiful car in the world. The car traveled in a number of different car shows, while the development continued. Sadly, never made it. The sad thing is that Artioli really wanted to build this car, but that was impossible since the money just wasn't there, and in 1995 they went bankrupt. Like the EB110, the EB112 was way ahead of its time, and like the EB110 many cars copied the ideas of the EB112, with number one being the design. The EB112 was the first for door coupé, something that basically every luxury brand is doing now. But even though after 25 years later, the EB112 still looks better than all the other cars that copied in my opinion. Probably because the car was, wasn't based in any existing chassis like all the others do. Now even though a concept, there exist 3 EB112s out there. After Bugatti went bankrupt, the Monaco racing team bought the 3 EB112s that they were, they were built. Two were finished, and one they owned together with Ital Design. The third one was unfinished, and was being built for a Swiss dealer. The Ital Design one is shown on their showroom, the Swiss EB112 is still in Switzerland, and the last one is still in Monaco, and went up for auction in 2016. After Bugatti went bankrupt in 1995, their name was bought by Volkswagen Group in 1998, the same year that they bought Lamborghini and Bentley. Volkswagen was trying to find what to do with the new names that they had just acquired. Also, around this time, Volkswagen was developing their W engines, which some made it into their concept cars of the time. The first Bugatti concept came in 1998, and was designed again by Giugiaro. The car, which was named EB18, shared many design similarities with the EB112. The EB118 was basically a true recreation of the Atlantic, ultra luxurious Grand Tour. The best part of the EB118 was the engine. The engine was a 6.3 liter W18, formed from three banks of six cylinders. The 118 was the first car to use a 18 cylinder engine and had 550 horsepowers, which helped the 118 to reach a top speed of over 320 km per hour. The car was presented at the 1998 Paris Motor Show, and Volkswagen was actually considering to build the car. But this was impossible, since the new Bugatti factory was still under construction. One year later came the 218, which was the four-door version of the 118. The 218 continued the same design language as the 112 and the 118, but this time had lost the best part, the bot tail. Also, in 1998 came the 18th and 3rd Chiron, which also used the same W18 engine, and again was designed by Ital Design, but this time by Giorgetto's son Fabrizio. The 18th and 3rd was a more sporty car, since the engine was behind the seats, but not much is known about this car. In 1999, at the Tokyo Motor Show, Bugatti presented the Veyron, which continued using the same W18 engine, but differently from the previous cars, the design was more smoother now, a design which made it into production. Now, as we all know, no W18 engine was ever produced, and the Veyron had a W16 engine. While developing the W18 Bugatti engine, Volkswagen was also developing a W16 engine, which made its first appearance with a Bentley Andreas, which was presented at the 1998 Geneva Motor Show. The Andreas had a W16 engine, which was formed from two V8s. The engine had the capacity of 8004 cc and a maximum power output of 630 horsepower and 560 pound foot of torque. The car was well received, but Volkswagen decided not to build the car, since the Andreas wasn't up there with a new Bentley image that they were going for. But they continued developing the engine. The Audi Rosmeyer, which was introduced one year later, used the same engine. The Rosmeyer had a very striking design, 
which was inspired by her legendary silver arrows. The 8 liter engine produced 700 horsepower, and like the Veyron, the Rossmeyer was all wheel drive. One year later, the W16 engine finally made it into the Veyron, and the rest is a story for another video.